Hi, I'm Peter Folsom from Zimithus. In this video presentation, I'm going to be primarily talking about JBase, the Jedi, and SQL. What is a Jedi? How does it work? Why would you want to store your data in a SQL database? In fact, I recommend you check out Patrick Payne's Power BI presentation, as often the supposed need for a relational database is for advanced reporting features, which is possible to do without any modification to your database database. How does JBase work with native SQL tables? Steps to set up the ready-built Jedi RDBMS, and pros and cons. So what is a Jedi? Many people think it's a nickname for a powerful utility in JBase. While the Jedi is indeed powerful, it actually stands for JBase External Device Interface. It's also not a utility, but an architectural design feature of JBase, which enables any JBase application or data I.O. based command to be routed to a custom data source. In fact, every JBase file uses the JEDI as its I.O. engine for all data-related activity. How do you create one? A good place to start is to go to the install directory of your JBase install and look under the source directory, or rather SRC directory, where you will find samples of JEDI drivers, as they are sometimes referred. As for what language to write your JEDI driver in, BASIC, Java, which is our new object-oriented language. In fact, there's a very good Java sample uh, JEDI underneath the sources, or regular C, C++. So how does it all work? Let's jump to the command line session, and I'll show you some examples, and then I'll go back to visual flows. So here we are at JBase command line. First, I'm going to jump into my SQL. Pick my database, show my tables. You'll see I've got a couple of sample tables there, Gamble, Hardware, State. These are from previous works. Whoops, I didn't mean quit, I mean quit. <laughs> so now I'm going to create a JBase JEDI file pointing to that database. So that ODBC type is the JEDI driver I'm using. And now if we go back into my SQL, you'll see we now have a customer table and a customer server table. The customer server table reflects the multi-values for the server multi-value section defined in the customer definition. So let's have a look into that. And, and uh, well, first I will do a describe of the table. And you can see it's got an ID, which is the primary key, and then a bunch of regular fields. And this customer file is actually based on a demo file that you can generate in JBase via the command make demo file. And it's useful for doing some testing of JQL or transaction logging, whatever. And down the bottom, you can see BMC server. And that stands for value mark count for the server multi value section. So therefore, well, let's go back to the demo and we'll see that in better detail. Now I'm going to copy some data. Now the MDF underscore customer file is a file that I created using the make demo file command, hence the, the file MDF customer. And I'm going to copy some data in there. Now we'll go back into our MySQL. And then if we select start from customer, five for example, it's a little bit uh, hard to read, I guess, in some ways because it's wrapping. Um, but you can see we've got an ID column there, and we've got first name and last name. And perhaps if I was to just change this to say select ID comma BMC server, you'll see there's five records, and these are the keys. And this one has eight multi -vase. This one has five, eight, seven, and six. So how do we actually create that file slash definition? So 
So here is the definition that's been used by that create file. It's called customer.csv. And you can see these um, fields in the first um, section relate to the columns that we saw. And these ones here refer to the multi waves for the customer server table. Most of these are just defined as character types, hence the C. But we do have an N here and a N here because these are both numbers. It's best, it's not to be confused that a number has to be an integer. So although the ID was in fact a number, it has leading zeros. So therefore, you can't store that as a number. There's some tracing uh, that you can turn on as well. And you can see here it's going through the JEDI driver and it's showing a trace of it opening the file, doing a select, doing a read next, and then doing a read. And here we are in the actual record. If we EX, You'll see it does a read next to get the next record, another read, and so on. So let's go back to our presentation. So explaining a little bit more as to what I was doing there with the create file. You saw me do a create file, customer, type equals ADBC, and that was it. I could have also said create file, customer, type equals ABC, def equals customer, table equals customer, or I could have said create file, ODBC, customer, type equals ABC, def equals customer, table equals customer. If you don't specify def or table, then it defaults to the file name, although that file name has to be a valid table name from an RDBS BMS perspective, and it also has to correspond to a valid def as in customer.csv in this example. There might be instances where you want to interface to a third-party database of a third-party app which already has tables in there, in which case you would use the existing equals yes. And you may also want to add restrictive write operations. For example, you might want to allow updates only or inserts only or inserts and updates. It's probably unlikely that you would allow deletes, but you never know. Uh, by default, if you if you specify write ops equals with no options, then you just got read only access. If you don't put anything there, then it assumes you have all access. The stub file is the physical file that gets created on the uh, on the operating system level. So, for example, if I'm in slash home slash Peter F and I do create file customer type equals ABC, I will have a stub called slash home slash Peter F slash customer. That's just the physical um, reference point that JBase needs to open the file. And another way that you can interact with uh, SQL or any other database that matter is to incorporate user defined functions into your basic code or Java code if you're starting to use that. And you can do that by either writing something in Java and injecting some C, or you can write basic code and reference an, a C app, application using def C, and that would require an API that would do a connect to a database and do whatever I.O. that you need. So let's just go through the steps of how the JEDI drive is actually working in this case. So on the left you see we've got a basic um, snippet of code, or JBC as we like to call it. It's doing an open of the customer file to a file handle. And on the right hand side we've got JQL um, and we're just doing a sort customer by whatever. Both of these will go through the JEDI file stub, in this case which will be customer. And you can see that it starts with JBC double underscore SOB, which stands for shared object. And that tells the JEDI layer to look for in the next word a function, in this case JEDI init ODBC. And that function is going to return a structure to the JEDI layer to um, specify all the other API functions that this JEDI driver is going to use for 
open, read, select, read next, and so on. And then following on from the JETA and ODBC is whatever you want. And in this case, this ODBC driver expects to see a table name, which is in this case is custom. And there's more to it than that if we were to look at this term. So the first time a driver of type ODBC is called, it looks up this stub, or looks up this Jedi init ODBC function. If we were to create additional files and they are of type Jedi init ODBC, then the Jedi layer knows that it already uh, can deal with this type of file and doesn't need to call Jedi init ODBC. The next thing that's going to occur is an open. So in both these cases, the file needs to be open. Sort customer has to open the file before it can do anything. So it's going to call the open method in the ODBC Jedi. And at that point, it's going to say, what uh, DSN uh, does this database reside? Is this the first time that this has been accessed? So it needs to make a connection to that database. If another file was to be accessed in the same JBase process, and the same DSN, it doesn't need to make a connection because it says, well, this is the same DSN that I connected before. I've already got a connection handle. I can just reuse that. You could have different uh, JEDI stubs that are also of type ADBC, but they point to different uh, DSNs. So you could have a customer file in a MySQL database, and you could have a product file in a SQL Server database. The JBase application is none the wiser. The next thing we're going to do is do a read. And when we do an ed, as you can see on the right, that is also going to do a read. So it's, they're both going to call the same method. Now, a read requires a prepared SQL query that's going to fetch a bunch of columns and put them together into a dynamic array. If it's the first time that a read has occurred for this type of file, not uh, DSN related, but customer specifically, then it will prepare the read SQL statement. And any subsequent reads, it'll just reuse that, that um, handle. So why would you want to store your data in SQL? Um, perhaps a business decision based on perceived requirements, as I mentioned. Patrick uh, Payne does a very good uh, presentation on how to use Power BI with JBase. But there may be other reasons uh, why uh, the need for storing something in SQL. Uh, more often the case, the, the examples are that there's a, another database that you need to work with uh, as part of your business, uh, third-party system. Or maybe you've bought uh, an off-the-shelf app that uses SQL Server or MySQL or Oracle and you want to be able to interact that within your JBase application without having to execute bash scripts or curl statements or anything fancy like that. Steps to setting up the ready build RDBS Jedi. First, choose your connectivity. Um, in this case, we're just using ADBC uh, mainly because it works for anything. It won't be as fast as using OCI or LEDB, but there's a lot more involved in getting those to work. If you're not running on Windows, you will need to install an ODBC driver. Uh, the Unix ODBC one is free. Um, it takes a little bit of setting up, but we can provide samples on how to do that. Next you want to do is build schemas for your multivay data. Again, we have some tools that will generate the bulk of the schemas uh, based on dictionaries, and there are other methodologies that you might use. You might just want to create them from scratch. And then, of course, you create your files. Pros and cons. Pros, obviously, is it saves, as I mentioned, saves having to execute a, a, a SQL script or some other bash script where you have to pipe through data back and forth. It's not very efficient. It also means you have to keep connecting to the database every time. And if there's a requirement for you to sell your application on an IWMS, then you can tick that box. Cons. 
the performance is never going to match uh, native JBase data files. Uh, that's one of the key reasons why the PIC model, um, not just JBase, although we believe JBase is fastest, the PIC model is much more efficient at just traversing through bulk records and uh, individual reads and writes. Also, flexibility. When you go down this route, the reads and writes to your data have to match the schema. While there is a way of setting up uh, an exceptions table so that if a write fails, it will go to a secondary storage so that your application doesn't fail, that defeats the purpose of being in SQL. So you have to make sure that your application is strict in the way it writes its data. Otherwise, you'll need to use blobs. Well, that was it. If you have any questions, please visit docs.jbase.com.